Good morning, guys. It's Friday morning. TGIF. Um, watched uh, Southern Paladin's video this morning, talking about his sister-in-law who used to think one way about pain and suffering and now thinks another way. Um, yeah, man, uh, that's a, it's an interesting topic for sure. Um, pain and suffering. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think one of the biggest, um, mistakes that people make when they're trying to share their faith or convert people or whatever you want is to delegitimize their concerns or delegitimize their 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 point of view you know where you say uh you're thinking about this the wrong way um i i don't think that's a i don't think that's a smart way to do it i'm not saying that you did that either by the way i'm not saying that you said that i'm saying that that's why I hear a lot of people do like, so I was picturing this back and forth between your sister-in-law and your father-in-law about her saying, well, there can't be a God because if there was a God and he's all loving and all knowing and blah, 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 then he would definitely intervene when this, you know, uh, little girl got murdered in, in her hometown and all, all that stuff. And, and, and um, to listen to an argument like that and say, you don't have a point that's that's very um obtuse in my opinion of course she has a point it's a great point isn't it i mean as a christian and as a former non-christian i can tell you that i completely understand that point of view and it's a very difficult uh question to answer and it's a very sensitive thing to address and it's like What's the point of you or anyone else sharing their faith with someone? Is, is it to win the argument? Is it to sound smarter than the other person? Or is it to actually try to win that person over and, and, and try to help them? You know, and unfortunately, um, lots of times it's about trying to look like the smartest person in the room. And it's about winning the argument. Unfortunately, that's what it is about a lot with, with some people. And I'll even lump myself in that category because we're all tempted to, 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 you know, our, our pride tempts us to try to appear to be the smartest person in the room and the most educated person in the room, the most logical person in the room, the least foolish person in the room, whatever you want to say. Um, so, uh, but I think it's important to humble oneself and to meet somebody exactly where they are and to acknowledge and concede their, their, their points. I mean, there are even scriptures in the Bible where Solomon was writing and he, he was even saying in Ecclesiastes, in the book of Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament, Solomon is like, I just don't understand what's going on here. He's like, I see a righteous man and he's getting punished for something he didn't do. And I see an evil man and he's getting rewarded for his evil. Like, how is this happening? So the Bible actually addresses that, you know, the Bible struggles with it. Like the writers of the Bible struggled with it. Um, and when you acknowledge that, you have you have to kind of go one of two ways with it and go well either either one um the writers of the bible are just they're just fooling themselves christians are fooling themselves and just saying well they're 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 seeing a purpose in all of this when there really isn't one because it helps them cope with life to give them hope you know it helps them um and that's actually partially true that it does help you. It does help you cope with life to see a purpose in suffering. Um, and it helps you cope with life 
to say, okay, well, this, this, you know, this infant was killed in a car accident or caught in the crossfire between two gangs shooting at each other. And God must have had a purpose. Now, that's a, that, that's a faith point of view. But it doesn't mean that you're wrong. It doesn't mean that you're, that, that it's not true. And that you're, the only reason that you believe it is because it makes you feel better to believe that. Um, and, and it's completely based on a falsehood, you know, a lie. And it's better to embrace reality and just say, hey, you know, you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And it was just fate. And it was, and, and, and everything's just random. Um, one of those is true. <laughs> one of those points of view is true. And the other one is not, you know, and um, I hate to put it this way, but it's kind of a choice. You're either going to choose to believe that it happened for a reason because you believe that there's an all loving God who has a purpose for everything, or you're going to believe that, that there isn't an all loving God and that, and that it was just random. And you know, the people who are in the wrong place at the wrong time, no matter how strong they are, no matter, you know, what they got going for them, if you just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, then your number is up and that's it. Um, here's, here's what I know is that, um, w what you believe about suffering doesn't change the fact that there's suffering, right? So, um, if you live in a good neighborhood or a bad neighborhood, you can believe whatever you want about that neighborhood, right? There are people who are naive and they live in a shitty neighborhood and they're like, yeah, I live in an okay neighborhood. Meanwhile, you hear gunshots going off and sirens all the time and people tried to break into your house last weekend and blah, 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 blah. But they're just, they just lie to themselves and they say, well, I, I live in a good neighborhood. And then there's other people, unfortunately, who actually live in a really good neighborhood, but they're always looking for the, the bad and everything. And they, this neighborhood's going to shit. And, oh, really? Why? Well, there was a car down the street that had no wheels on it for a couple days. Somebody just left it there. And then finally the police came and got it. Like, okay. So that means you live in a bad neighborhood? Like, what the hell are you talking? There's no crime here. There's no, you know, just because a couple of idiots left a car with, you know, abandoned a car on your street, you know, like, uh, you, no matter what you believe about a situation, it doesn't change, you know, the situation. It's just your, your belief about the situation. Now, you can, you can be grateful for the good things or you can be, uh, jaded about, you know, the bad things. If you look for the good, you'll find the good. If you look for the bad, you'll find the bad. Um, I think it's important to actually recognize the good and bad in every situation. You know, be thankful for the good things and then be, be, be hopeful that the bad things will get better. But I don't want to veer too far off the topic here. But um, what I found and this might be the crux of, of, of everything to help some people. Because I know that there's friends on YouTube, Corey and some of the other guys who just are just kind of like dumbfounded. The fact that I, um, that I found my faith, like they're just dumbfounded. They're just like, what the hell? You know, because of what used to come out of my mouth before. But this is what I found. That once you choose to have faith... In my opinion, and I don't, I know this is going to sound, man, I don't want this to sound arrogant or conceited or superior. I feel that living a life of faith, it's actually, um, put it in an evolutionary uh, context. It's like a next level of thinking. It's like, it, it's actually a higher level of thinking where um, it's a lower level of thinking for you to just look at the things that are going on in your immediate environment and making um, determinations based on that and saying, well, this is how this is. You know, there's pain and there's suffering. Um, it's like, uh, like you're like a, it's, it's like a childish way of looking at things like, well, God is supposed to be good. God is supposed to be all powerful. There's pain and suffering in the world. Therefore, God can't exist. Um, 
you're not opening yourself to up, up to the idea of God can exist, but um, he's not fully, um, what's the word I'm looking for, manifested in this world. He's not, he's not fully manifested in this world. So um, uh, could God just overcome the world and just make everything good? Yes, he could. He could come down, he could destroy all the bad people, and he could uplift all the good people. And, you know, it could be a total Robin Hood scenario where all of the poor and righteous people who, you know, not that you're righteous because you're poor, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, that They move into all the mansions and drive all the Maseratis and everything. And then all the rich people who, who all, all their gain is ill-gotten gain, they get what they deserve and they they go down and live in the in the in you know next to the dumpster and and begging for scraps and blah blah, blah. um that's not happening right now um but i believe that god has a plan with regard to that does it make me feel better to believe that yes but the fact that it makes me feel better to believe that does that mean it's not true no of course not. Think about all the things that you do that help you sleep at night, right? Do you buy gold? Do you have a safe where you keep cash in there? Do you do you uh, contribute to your 401k so that you can retire someday? Do you have a gun next to your bed? You do all these things that help you sleep sleep at night and help you feel safe and feel good and feel secure. Does that mean that all the things that you're doing are bogus just because they make you feel secure? No. Of course not. They make you feel secure for a reason. Um, and my argument is that a human being is not a complete human being on this earth unless they have faith. And once you fill your gaps of understanding with faith, like, I don't understand this, but I'm just going to believe that God is doing something in my life and other people's lives. It just, it, it just kind of fills in all the gaps. And then later on, you start to learn things and like, okay, the thing that I thought might have been true, I just confirmate, got confirmation that that thing actually is true because I experienced it or, or whatever. Um, then it then it's not just a hundred percent faith walk, you know. I mean, what's a faith walk? What what's what's complete faith? You know, it's 